Hello, my friend. We look at the vast, wild, open ocean and see it as the last frontier, a symbol of untamed nature. And when we see a perfect salmon fillet at the store, we imagine it came from these pristine waters. But what if I told you that over half of the seafood we now eat comes not from the wild, but from a farm? And not just any farm. Today, we're diving deep into the world of open ocean cage aquaculture. These are colossal, floating factories, some holding over a million pounds of fish in a single location. This technology is hailed as the solution to feeding a hungry planet, but it's also at the center of a fierce environmental debate. Is this the future of food, or is there a hidden cost to these underwater cities? For thousands of years, our relationship with the sea was that of a hunter. But as the global population has soared, the demand for seafood, particularly healthy proteins like fish, has exploded. Wild fish stocks, the fish caught by traditional fishing boats, have hit a ceiling. They cannot sustainably provide more than they already do. This created a massive gap between supply and demand. The answer to this problem was the Blue Revolution, aquaculture, or fish farming. And one of its most dominant forms for ocean-dwelling fish is cage farming. Today, we'll explore two worlds of this revolution. The cold, deep fjords of countries like Norway and Canada, home to the salmon industry, and the warm, tropical bays of Southeast Asia, a powerhouse in other species. Our first stop is a salmon farm, nestled in a protected fjord. From the surface, all you see are a series of large, circular rings floating in the water. But beneath each ring is a massive net, creating a cage that can be 50 meters wide and 30 meters deep, an underwater cathedral holding tens of thousands of Atlantic salmon. The life of these salmon begins in a freshwater hatchery on land, mimicking the streams where their wild cousins are born. Once they grow into young fish called smolts and are ready for salt water, they are transported here, to their new home in the sea. They will spend the next one to two years growing to market size. Life in the cage is run by technology. A central feeding barge acts as the farm's command center. Computers control automated systems that pump a specially formulated high-protein pellet feed through tubes directly into the cages. Underwater cameras monitor the fish, ensuring they are fed without excessive waste. This feed is a source of controversy as it has traditionally relied on fish oil and meal from wild-caught forage fish like anchovies. The industry is now in a race to find more sustainable alternatives, like algae and soy proteins, to reduce its footprint. Now, let's travel across the world. Here in the tropical bays of coastal Vietnam or Thailand, you see a different style of cage farming. It's often a floating village of interconnected square cages made of wood and buoys that can stretch for miles. Entire communities live and work on the water, tending to their underwater livestock. In these cages, you'll find fast-growing warm water species like barramundi, also known as Asian sea bass, a popular whitefish that is exported globally. The methods here can be more traditional. Feeding might be done by hand, with workers throwing buckets of feed into the cages, causing the water to boil with activity. This type of aquaculture is a vital economic engine for millions of people in the region. It provides a crucial source of protein for local consumption, and a valuable product for export to the grocery stores and restaurants of North America and Europe. Regardless of the location, harvesting an entire sea cage is a spectacle of industrial efficiency. When the fish have reached their target size of 8 to 12 pounds, a specialized harvesting vessel pulls alongside the cage. This isn't about a fishing line and a hook. A large tube, essentially a giant vacuum cleaner for fish, is lowered into the pen. A powerful pump is switched on, and thousands of fish are sucked out of the cage in a silver tsunami of water and life. They are pumped directly into the boat's refrigerated hold, where they are chilled or processed immediately to ensure maximum freshness. This method is incredibly fast and can empty a cage holding over 100,000 salmon, more than a million pounds of fish, in just a few hours. This incredible efficiency comes at a cost, and it's at the heart of the debate over cage farming. The argument for it is powerful. By farming fish, we can provide a consistent and affordable source of healthy protein for a growing planet, taking immense pressure off our vulnerable wild fish stocks. Without aquaculture, our oceans would be in far worse shape. 
but the arguments against it are serious. The massive concentration of fish in one area creates a lot of waste, feces and uneaten feed, which can settle on the seabed below, harming local ecosystems. The dense population also creates a breeding ground for diseases and parasites like sea lice, which can then spread to the wild fish populations outside the cages. And as we mentioned, the historical reliance on wild fish for feed creates its own sustainability problem. The industry is in a race to solve these issues. Farms are moving further offshore into deeper water with stronger currents to disperse waste. New, more sustainable feeds are being developed, and some are experimenting with integrated multi-trophic aquaculture where they grow seaweed and shellfish like mussels next to the fish cages. The seaweed and mussels feed on the fish waste, turning a pollution problem into another valuable crop. The floating factories of the sea represent a profound shift in our relationship with the ocean. We are moving from being hunters to being farmers. Cage aquaculture is a powerful but imperfect solution to one of the greatest challenges we face. How to sustainably feed 8 billion people the salmon on your grill or the sea bass on your plate is the end product of this complex, controversial and constantly evolving global industry. It's a choice that is full of difficult trade-offs between affordability, efficiency, and environmental impact. Now that you've seen the pros and cons, do you view cage-farmed fish as a sustainable solution for the future, or as a problem we need to solve? Would you be willing to pay more for fish that was certified as being raised with more sustainable feed? or in a system that minimizes environmental impact. This industry exists because wild fish stocks are limited. What is one thing you think we could all do to better protect our wild oceans? If this deep dive into the world of ocean farming gave you a new perspective, hit that subscribe button and share this video with a friend. Your support helps us tackle these critical stories about our planet's food system. Thanks for watching, my friend. We'll see you in the next one.